Hi, you guys. Hello. It's Anthony and Katrina. Hello, hello, hello. Oh my gosh, we're going live in here together. Can you believe it? Happy 2020. It's a new day. It's a new vision. And I'm using my technology, my love of technology, to bring you, my husband, Anthony, your wisdom. The wisdom as we walk through the word um, this year has been amazing. I yes. promise you, this has been the richest year ever. And so, of course, the tool that we are using is the 2020 Prayer Diary that you can get and have your, um, I had him silence his phone and then I forgot to silence my phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's your phone over there. I don't know. Can you silence your phone? This is what happens when you go live. That is my phone. <laughs> I was like, silence your phone, silence your phone. So you guys, we're coming to you from um, our home in Brentwood and uh, we're just going to talk briefly, only for about 20 minutes today, about journeying through Exodus. And so I'm kind of going to interview um, Anthony and have him talk about if you want to grab your Bible and kind of follow along with this. Can you just talk generally, babe, about Exodus in general, what we experience when we um, journey from Genesis into Exodus? Wow, that's a very, very good question, babe. Uh, one of the things that I want to emphasize, exodus, to exit something. And all of us who are believers have exited from sin uh, onto this new uh, Christian walk. And so exodus is about the journey of, of God's people coming out of Egypt, which is symbolic of bondage, Egypt, the nation is not bondage, but the this symbolism, the metaphors, as we study, is teaching us how to track the process, the process of leaving the old and entering into the new. Mm. And with it being February, all of us we are constantly thinking about in January about the new, and we have to keep that fresh. It is still the new year. Um, I'm going to go all the way to the writing, which is posted in this group. Uh, you've been doing a great job of just giving us insight. And so way back on, um, let's see, a couple, few days ago, we were in Exodus, at the beginning of Exodus. So I'm talking about Exodus chapter 4 through 12. And you talk all the time about teaching our hands to war. And can you just talk a little bit about what you wrote about in the beginning of Genesis, Exodus 4 through 12, where you're talking about teaching our hands to war. Well, when we, we look at the narrative, again, the narrative, the narrative is giving us insight into the mind of God. So the, the books are not just historical documents or just stories for you to read. They're giving you insight as to how God is developing you, building you, and enriching your life. And so uh, I wrote that with the mind of understanding that here's a people that is moving out of Egypt towards the land of promise. And so now God has to retrofit. God has to, to redo or to uh, remake their lives because 400 years in bondage creates a mentality of bondage. And so as he's moving them out of Egypt, one of the first things that he is teaching them is how to use what you got. And Moses in that case has a stick or rod, the shepherd's rod, which he received when he spent 40 years in the, the desert with his, his wife and her father, Jethro. So now he comes back and God says, use the stick, use the stuff in your hand, lay it down. And Moses, is laid, Moses lays the stick down and it becomes a serpent. And now God is teaching him how to handle the stick, pick it up from the end. And so you will do that when you go and stand before Pharaoh. So all of us, God is teaching you how to pray. He's teaching you how to pursue those things that you have desire uh, for. 
as as it relates to your development not 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 materialism uh wealth all those things will come in their place our pursuit is not the wealth our pursuit is the mentality of god the culture of god the kingdom of god and once we possess that because the king God will give you the houses to entertain people, to impact people, to uh, to disciple people, to raise awesome families, etc. The scripture says that God is a man of war. So as he's teaching your hands to war, as the psalmist says in Psalm 144 and 1, he's teaching your hands to war, your fingers to do battle. In fact, God is teaching you how to become like him. You said here, um, let us share a nugget with you. You were talking about Exodus, but you said, have you ever felt ill-prepared and not ready for the fight? The almighty sees your end from the beginning. God actually sees your finish. You are at his battle ax and weapon of war. He viewed Israel as a great host. Can you talk about when we have all felt ill-prepared and not ready for a fight. How is Exodus teaching us how to prepare for battle? It's interesting that many of those, those mentalities, those thoughts, those positions of mind, it comes uh, out of a, out of a, uh, a specific type of thinking that we think uh, the way that we think because we've been influenced to think that way. And so, God sees the beginning. He sees when you make that commitment to him and the finish. He already knows the finish. In him, there is no chrono chronological time. Uh, God, God is not uh, bound by seconds, minutes, and hours. So that doesn't operate within him. The scripture says that unto God a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. So when we look, uh, at this 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 type of mindset uh, feeling defeated feeling full of fear all those things have been imported to us so now uh, he's teaching you how to have faith faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen so now you're learning how to uh, believe for the invisible that will become visible did you do you hear that that we're believing for the impossible mm -hmm. that will become the possible. Mm -hmm. And so that's faith. So God is teaching us. And so we see defeat and being overwhelmed, but God already sees your finish. He sees your polish. He sees your, your beauty. And so the scriptures now are teaching us that my thoughts for you are good. They're, they're to give you a future and a hope. His thoughts are good. And, and so in writing um, that thought, as I was reflecting on the, the passage in Exodus, I was wanting to encourage the reader to know that you may feel like you're down and out right now, but God sees you as a champion down the road. And you, you always talk about for this reason, I created Pharaoh. The Pharaohs in our life, when their heart is just hardened, it's hardened. We, we know from reading in Exodus what the end would be and that they were released from Egypt. But how do you, um, just what can you say about Pharaoh and his heart being hardened and how that um, teaches us, gives us technology for walking today because there are many Pharaohs we see in our nation, in our world, um, can you talk about that? Well, he's in control, everybody. Listen, life is a big stage. It's a big production. And God is the producer. He's the director. He's running these thing, this thing. God is not dead. He's alive. And so there are situations that are designed to bring out your best. There are situations <laughs> designed to bring out your beauty. And so for Israel, God knew 
the mind of Pharaoh. Pharaoh thought he was God. So, I mean, he's a God. So God had to deal with Pharaoh on his level. So he raised up Moses to represent him. Moses would be a God to Pharaoh because Pharaoh is not going to deal with anybody unless he has respect for him. And Aaron would be the prophet. These are metaphors. These are symbols teaching us how uh, the kingdom of God operates, the kingdom of God functions. And so Pharaoh's heart is hardened so that he would, God would have to do some things, perform some signs and wonders in Egypt to let Egypt know that he is the true God and not Pharaoh. And so it came to a place where God had to take the firstborns of all Egypt. And that was the straw that broke the camel's back. And God released his people. So the, you may have a Pharaoh in your office. God's going to deal with your Pharaoh. You just be true to who you are. Be true to what the scripture says. Love those who persecute you. Love your enemy. Uh, give to those who treat you wrongly. I mean, these are principles because God is intervening. The, the, the scripture teaches us that when you love your enemy, it's like putting hot coals of fire on their head. Now, you're not loving them because you want their heads to burn. You're loving them because this is the nature of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. So he is still giving sons. We are sons. We are the sons of God, and he's, he's given us to the world. We're to be the light. We're to be the examples of God so that people can catch a fire and people can come into the understanding and the wisdom that we have of Almighty God. I pray this is blessing you because it's blessing me. I'm getting stirred just thinking about it. And I know we're talking about Exodus, but in today's reading, we're reading um, in Mark and seeing how Jesus was preparing to be crucified and what struck me in today's reading is how he was quiet because that you were talking about dealing with the pharaohs, dealing with the people in your life and it's so quick to just want to go into defense or opposition. Yes, we yes, see how yes, Christ yes. models, he just, you know, God fights our battle and um, he just was quiet. So we are going to go um, in the last 10 minutes that we have, we're going to go to where um, they're at the Red Sea. And you say in chapter 14, God does, again, this was posted in the group. If you want to go back to see this posting, God does another powerful thing with Moses. He teaches them how to use the same stick with his hand and stretch it out over the sea to make a path of escape for travel. The theme of learning to trust the voice of God as he instructs us how to overcome um, is profoundly beautiful. And so you wrote these words and we go um, in Exodus 14 through 23, you talked about taught of the Lord. So can you just talk about that and what they're experiencing, what we are to learn in those chapters? Yeah, when we, as now, as we are migrating or I, I, I like to use the words journeying to be on a, a, a journey mm -hmm. through the scriptures. And as we're passing through, we can see some specific things that God is doing with his people. So he's training them. Uh, there's emphasis, my hands will do. That's what God says, my hand. So in fact, it's really not you. The battle is not yours, it's the Lord. Now, God uses us because he's teaching us how to be like him, but, but the power is coming from him. The scripture teaches us not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. So God is using, so the same stick that he used to reveal signs to Pharaoh, the, the plagues, mm -hmm. now he's using the same instrument as a, as a, uh, a tool to part the Red Sea. So once the word gets in you, once uh, God develops you and he gives you gifts, he gives you uh, something special, he places it in your hand, what he is actually saying, use it. Mm -hmm. 
because they're facing this sea and Pharaoh is chasing them. Mm -hmm. And people are afraid. There are moments uh, that we have uh, amazing times in God. We have tremendous highs in God. Mm -hmm. But then there's moments when we have like valley experiences and we're confused. We've had great victory, but now we're confronted with some great, great thing before us. And God says, use a stick. Mm -hmm. And he uses this stick and he lifts the stick up, the rod, and the seal opens. Unbelievable. <laughs> um, just to imagine use that. the word, use your faith, use your love of God. I've learned to weep when I need victory. Sometimes it's not in your effort, it is not in your strength but is in weeping and praying and crying, learning how to travail, learning how to give birth to the things that you are so desperately desiring. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the Song of Moses, you see in Exodus 15, um, the Song of Moses, the Song of Miriam, and you talk about that experience, how Moses is, is um, how his faith is being built and how important his worship and, and just um, him as the leader. And um, you know, as we go through Exodus, there's just so many emotions you see as you talked about the ups and the downs. So can you just say something about the Song of Moses? You know, I, I have this, this thing uh, for correctness that has to take place within the church. Uh, I love worship. I love great singing. I love great choreography, great dancing. But I think we've gotten away with under, we've gotten away from understanding why praise dance should take place. It's not just something that we do to invoke the presence of God. Somehow we've gotten it mixed up. Praise dancing, worship, singing does not invoke God. It's something that we do. He inhabits the praises, yes. But when it's done um, out of a right order, mm -hmm. it becomes religious. Songs are birthed out of experiences. Mm -hmm. Getting to your question. Mm -hmm. That the song of Moses is about the triumph. <laughs> It's about the triumph that took place as they're migrating out of Egypt to the place of promise and out of that song. So you should be creating songs that describe your journey. I was listening to a worship song the other day and it was, it was birthed out of this desperation to see a friend's daughter heal who was facing death. And out of that, a song of the Lord was birthed and they began to sing the song of the Lord and the next day they got the miracle. Mm. And so Miriam, she comes out, she dances with the tamarines. They're celebrating the victory. Mm -hmm. Praise worship should be done as a result of celebrating the victory. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, showboating or it shouldn't be some type of pageantry that is invoking pride. It's about celebration of victory, moving from a place of defeat to a place of triumph, seeing yourself overcome in God. And so even the songs of Solomon of the songs of David, today you should be creating your song, write your song, <laughs> glory to God. And let's sing it and watch those songs travel across the seas and to the nations and nations. As I travel the nations, I see the songs that have been birthed in America or Australia being sung in every language, in Sweden, Swedish language, in Germany, Germ Germanic languages, in Greece, the Greek language, Spanish. I mean, it's just amazing. You can hear uh, the, the the melodies, the rhythms, and you know the songs and, and watch the people worship God. Mm -hmm. Those are the songs that are to be birthed in this season. Yeah. This is so good. 
We have one minute left. We covered a lot in Exodus, so we're going to finish with Exodus chapter 20, and then you have to come back. We'll come back. I'll convince him to come back so we can finish Exodus before we continue on. But can you just um, close by talking about the Ten Commandments, Moses receiving the Ten Commandments, the laws of God? The Ten Commandments are it's similar to what Jesus taught us about the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is a is a model of showing us how to pray. So there are, there are specific outlines as it as it relates to the Lord's Prayer. So it's not just praying the Lord's Prayer ver, 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 verbatim as we do uh, in churches, but it's to acknowledge who he is, to worship him, to praise him, to ask him for the daily bread, etc. The Ten Commandments are not limited just to the tent. It's the start of a beginning. God is giving them structure. He's establishing government within a particular people. So as you build your families, as you build your churches, you're to establish government. Government is like the skin to the skeletal system. If you have no skin on the body, then all of the parts will just fall and become a blob. You need the structure. You need the skeletal structure. You need the skin that wraps itself around the, the body and gives it give its life. Mm -hmm. And so God is giving the Ten Commandments. The number 10 in Hebrew gematria represents the word of God. So the Ten Commandments are the word of God. Later on, there will be 633 other commandments that will well, 623 other commandments that will be added to this. But these are the basic 10. Mm -hmm. And so as they're given to them, it's, it's, it's for the purpose of giving them life, guidance, and to help them uh, survive on this journey that God has them on. That is excellent. Well, guys, we are on a mission for 1,000 people to journey with us in the prayer journal, um, I'm going to close with the uh, I'm going to close with the scripture reading for the week, and I'm going to ask you to close with the prayer for today. Our scripture reading for the week, memory verse, has really blessed me. Psalms 112. Uh, it was my Instagram post yesterday. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in His command. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. We're praying for Japan, 1.6 million people, 69% Buddhist, less than 1.5% Christian. And we know that there are um, right now uh, men and women of God in Japan that, that we are praying for that are introducing the Christ to the Japanese culture. Um, and as we close today, I'm going to ask you to close in prayer. Today's prayer focus, yesterday, interestingly, was praying for earthquakes. We've been praying for uh, families living in harsh conditions, famines and droughts, earthquakes, floods, tomorrow fires as we sit here in California, so um, so close to home, theft, and uh, then finally Saturday, pray for the flourishing and preservation of God's creation. But can you close us out today and we're praying for people affected by floods uh, globally. Father, we ask that you would hear our prayers along with the many uh, thousands of people who are using these uh, or this diary. Uh, and we ask that you would protect those who are around rivers and lakes and streams that are over uh, flooding. We ask that you would protect them from any danger. We pray, God, that uh, you would keep them and peace. We ask now in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Please comment below and let us know your thoughts about Exodus and also what questions you have that maybe we can answer. So we pray that this has blessed you and have an amazing, powerful day. Be blessed.